If you've ever watched or read The Da Vinci Code, Full Metal Alchemist, or the latest Fantastic Beast movie, to name but a few examples, then you might remember coming across the character of Nicolas Flamel. He is said to have been an alchemist who succeeded in turning base metals into silver and gold, and even managed to attain immortality. And the reason why he keeps showing up in so many different fictional works is because he actually existed. The real Nicolas Flamel was born in around 1340, in the city of Pontoise, now a suburb of Paris. However, unlike his fictional counterpart, there's nothing that actually points to him being an alchemist. Rather, he was known as a scribe and manuscript seller, and a quite successful one at that. Aside from his work, he also got a considerable amount of wealth through his marriage to the widow Pernell. Together, the two became known for their philanthropy, contributing financially to poorhouses and churches, sometimes through the commissioning of sculpture. One such example is the now lost portal of the church of Saint-Jacques de la Boucherie, where you could see the couple kneeling down and praying. This church also happens to be where Nicolas Flamel was buried in 1418, having lived into his late 70s. His tombstone, which he designed himself, can still be seen at the Musée de Cluny and is carved with the images of Christ, Saint Peter and Saint Paul. You can even go and visit one of Flamel's houses, which still stands at 51 Rue de Montmorency. It's actually the oldest stone house in the entire city, and nowadays contains a restaurant. On the walls you can find an old inscription which reads, We, plowmen and women, living at the porch of this house, built in 1407, are requested to every day say an Our Father and an Ave Maria, praying God that His grace forgive poor and dead sinners. But then, this of course begs the question of how Nicholas Femel the scribe turned into Nicholas Femel the immortal alchemist. Well, one can speculate that the combination of someone dealing with books for a living and then all of a sudden starting to throw money left and right would get some rumours going. Although, as can be seen in his will, there was definitely a limit to his wealth. But what gained him the legendary status that he enjoys today was a series of books published in the 1600s, which had supposedly been written by him. The most famous of them, called the Exposition of the Hieroglyphical Figures, was released in Paris in 1612 and later in London in 1624. The book is about a collection of designs purportedly commissioned by Flamel for the decoration of a portal in the Holy Innocents Cemetery. However, it's the publisher's introduction which is of more importance for the spread of his reputation. It describes how, in around 1378, Nicolas Flamel had travelled to Spain to seek help translating a strange book that he had come across. On the way he met with the sage, who identified it as being a copy of the book of Abramelin, and with the information that he had gotten on his trip, Nicolas, together with his wife Pernell, are said to have eventually decoded this book and managed to replicate his recipe for the Philosopher's Stone, producing first silver in 1382, and then gold. Before long, the story of Flamel had become well known in circles of alchemy, and was for example mentioned in works by Isaac Newton. It wasn't until 1761, almost a century and a half after the book had been published, that the validity of the story was first put into question by a certain Etienne Villain. Although he claimed that the story had simply been made up by the publisher, others continued to defend it, and several supposed sightings of the man were made in the 17th and 18th centuries. Exactly how they would be able to recognize someone who's supposed to have been dead since the Middle Ages is a bit of a mystery to me, but supposing that they were right after all, we would in 2019 be able to congratulate Nicolas Flamel on reaching the ripe old age of roughly 679.